The program timer5hertz.c uses timer1 to toggle one of the LEDs at 5 hertz. Since the CPU is running at 80 megahertz, uh, that means that every 16 million CPU cycles, the LED should toggle. So if we say that 16 million has to be equal to the prescaler for timer one, multiplied by its period register plus one, we need to find the prescaler value and the period register value that will give us 16 million. So let's choose 256. We only have a few choices for the prescaler. Let's choose a large number, the largest that's available to us. We do this division and we find that 62,500 is equal to the period register plus one. So we can only count up to about 65,000 with the 16-bit timer, timer one in this case. So this is just barely under that limit. So we can use a single 16-bit timer to implement this five hertz uh, interrupt service routine. Um, we're going to use the peripheral bus clock also coming in at 80 megahertz uh, as the input to the timer uh, instead of using some external source. So here's the code. Um, we write this interrupt service routine. We give it a priority level of five. Uh, all that this does is it's going to toggle one of the LEDs and then it's going to clear the interrupt flag. Okay. So now the rest of the program is to set up that timer to toggle at, to call the interrupt service routine at five hertz. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, the first step for, to setting up an interrupt is to turn off, or the second step is to disable the interrupts to the CPU. Uh, here we use the fact that we just calculated PR1 to be 62,499. Uh, this is where we're setting up the timer one to generate the interrupt. Uh, we're going to set the value of timer one to zero, so it starts counting from zero and then goes up to 62,499. Uh, here's where we set the prescaler. So if we consult the data sheet, we can see by setting the bits TCKPS to three that we're choosing a prescaler of 256. Uh, we're going to choose the clock source for timer one to be the peripheral bus clock instead of an external input. And now we're going to turn on the timer one. Uh, the next step is to set the priority level for uh, the timer one interrupt. We have to set it to five to match the interrupt service routine above. The, the interrupt sub priority doesn't really matter. Uh, interrupt step five here is to set the flag to zero so that there is no interrupt pending. Then we want to enable the interrupt in step six. And finally, in step seven, we're going to tell the CPU to start paying attention to interrupt requests again. And then all we have now is an infinite loop. And what's going to happen is we're going to count up to 62,499. The interrupt service routine will be triggered. The LED will flip. And then the timer just rolls over back to zero and continues. And now we've implemented a five hertz flashing where the LED turns on and off uh, five times a second.